Hello, everyone. This is Michael Liu. I hope that you are well and coping with the pandemic. It is my great pleasure to present my paper at this virtual ECTC 2020 conference. The title of my paper is "Mode Interconnect Substrate MIS Technology for Semiconductor Packages." As you can see on the cover page of my presentation, I have provided my company email address. In case you will have any questions after watching my presentation, feel free to reach out to me. I will do my best to answer your questions in a timely manner. Presently, I'm the director of global technical marketing at JSEC Group, a four billion dollar company in the OSEP industry. OSEP stands for Outsourced Semiconductor Assembly and Test. Before that, I was with a number of high tech companies in the U.S. I was a PhD candidate in electrical engineering at UCLA. Most recently, I was enrolled as a part time PhD student. In management science and engineering at Stanford University. This ECTC paper presentation is composed of three parts. In part one, I will briefly describe the application space of MIS technology, what is the key market driver, and why MIS will be a good candidate for satisfying some unique package requirements. In part two. From both substrate and package perspectives, I will provide some details on the characteristics and implementations of single layer and multiple layer MIS design options. In the last part, part three, I will touch upon some of the emerging use cases for MIS technology. I will conclude the presentation with a conclusion slide to summarize what we will have discussed here. Overall speaking, we will be spending about 20 minutes to deliver the whole presentation. Packaging technology landscape. In this slide, the x-axis represents line space accuracy of a given substrate or package. The y-axis represents the thickness of RDL if there's one, copper trays. Or substrate layer. It also represents the maximum power rating or current throughput a given substrate or package can handle. Because of the continued demand for higher density packages, there is certainly a trend or momentum to push many of these different substrate technologies towards more stringent line space requirements. On the other hand. The large number of functional building blocks being squeezed into a package has significantly increased the demand for higher power slash current handling designs. MIS technology is right in the middle of balancing this trade-off between line space accuracy and power handling capabilities. This is a chart adopted from Yo, where a vision of package application space in 2030 is provided. In this chart, the x-axis represents number of IOs. The y-axis represents package footprint or body size. As shown here, MIS will come to occupy a niche application space where package footprint is no larger than 200 millimeter square. An IO count will likely be less than 1,000. Three key market drivers for MIS technology: number one, 5G RF front-end applications such as RF switching or antenna tuning require packages that come with high linearity and high power efficiency. Number two, wearable and biomedical markets demand for ultra-thin, tiny packages. Number three. Industrial IoT edge computing markets demand for low-profile, highly reliable, sometimes MSL1 packages. As shown in this slide, there are a list of items that will help answer the big question: Why MIS? 
Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through them one by one. However, hereby I would like to highlight these two. Number one, MIS can serve as a bridge between standard leaf frame and organic laminate substrate. In terms of those key considerations included in this radar chart. Number two, quite a few fabulous companies, more often than not, would select MIS technology simply to shrink the volume of their existing shipping products without the need to conduct a new die spin or IC tape out. The standard fabrication process of a one-layer MIS is illustrated in this slide. As shown here, the first plating step fabricates the horizontal copper trays and the second the vertical. After that, dry film is stripped and the traces will be either over molded with EMC or laminated by using Ajinomoto Build-Up Film, aka ABF. After that, window etching and service grinding process steps are carried out to expose the copper studs or pads on both sides of the substrate. Then, a certain service finish plating method will be chosen, depending on the MIS package format. If it will be a wirebound MIS package with gold wire, then only nickel palladium gold is needed as the pre-plated finished material, aka PPF. If it will be a flip chip MIS, then copper OSP or anti-tarnish material should be added. Hereby, I'm showcasing a one-layer MIS package implemented as a wirebound system package, aka SIP module, tailored for Bitcoin mining applications. It contains a microcontroller IC, a power management IC, and a local memory chip. Equipped with 0.8 mil Go wires, this ABF-based MIS package achieved MSL1 certification at only 0.7 millimeter thickness. In this slide, the standard process flow of implementing a two-layer MIS substrate is illustrated. As shown here, this is essentially a build-up process where M2 is stacked on top of M1. On such a two-layer MIS configuration, a few reliability risks have been observed, the most concerning of which pertains to potential delamination near the interfaces between M1 and M2. To mitigate such a delamination risk, compression molding technique has been applied. The two-layer MIS package shown here is built with compression molding, which has a package thickness at only 0.66 mm. Because MIS is a coreless substrate technology, warpage is also a potential issue. Shown here is a two-layer MIS package implemented with flip chip configurations. Package thickness is at 0.89 mm, with a footprint as large as 12 by 12 mm square. As depicted by the chart, the unilevel package warpage over reflow temperature cycle is within plus minus 25 micron range. To minimize warpage, optimization of molding and soldering parameters is warranted. As shown in this slide, a flip chip RF switch tailored for mobile RF front end applications is implemented with a 1.5 layer MIS substrate. Referring back to slide number 11, a 1.5 layer substrate is essentially a two layer but without the last molding step. The key benefit of a 1.5 layer MIS substrate is in that it provides a tall and large copper landing area for connecting the flip chip IC die. Notice the resemblance of this 1.5 layer MIS flip chip package to a standard fan out wafer level package, for example, EWLB. This is the three layer MIS process flow. 
same stack up practice as shown in the previous slides, and same considerations about warpage and delamination. This is a DC to DC voltage regulator module implemented with a three layer MIS substrate. Notice the big passive component mounted over the IC die, and the image resolutions enhance from left to right at a 1 mm, 400 micron, and 50 micron, respectively. As shown here, the copper pillar and resin around and between the layers are clean and have no burr. Here are additional RF and power packages implemented with MIS technology. As shown here, MIS is highly flexible when it comes to fulfilling a variety of wirebound and flip chip package requirements. This is a detailed comparison between standard QFM, MIS, and ETS, embedded trace substrate. As shown here, QFM has very limited routing ability. Its system-in-package SIP ability is limited by the number and size of panels. And it is more suitable for realizing packages with a low I.O. count. In comparison, MIS has great routing ability, and it is fully ready for implementing SIP or MCM, multiple chip module. It is not limited by paddles since the chip can be directly mounted on LED, aka chip on LED. It is suitable for realizing packages with a low to medium I.O. count. Compared to QFM and MIS, ETS is a better fit for implementing packages with larger footprints. Though it is a coreless substrate technology, ETS follows fairly similar design rules as those of standard laminate packages. ETS also has excellent routing ability and is ready for implementing SIP or MCM. In terms of IO count, ETS's is relatively higher than MIS's. This is indeed a very busy slide, and for the sake of time hereby I cannot get into too much detail. The key takeaway from this comparison is that, though MIS has many technological advantages, some of which are over standard QFM package, some over ETS package, its supply chain resources are still quite limited, which have hindered its market adoption over the past few years. In comparison, ETS has seen continued growth and is getting ready for prime time. So why is MIS not as popular as, say, ETS? Let's take a look into the next slide. This is a process level comparison between two-layer ETS and MIS. Generally speaking, most of the imperfections in ETS such as warpage and delamination will be originated from laser drilling and detaching processes. While in the case of MIS, warpage and delamination will be originated from molding and grinding processes. Between ETS and MIS, these imperfections and the associated occurrence levels are comparable. The key difference between ETS and MIS is in capex. For substrate manufacturers, ETS doesn't necessarily require a high capex because the majority of existing laser drilling and lamination machinery can be used to produce ETS on the same line. In comparison, MIS needs an expensive, high-stability back-grinding machine and a number of customer jigs to handle post-carrier substrates, which tend to be brittle resulting a high capex, hence the slow adoption rate of MIS. As detailed in my ECTC paper, though MIS is by no means an overnight commercial success, 
there's still great potential in MIS technology. For example, MIS is widely deemed a potential candidate for realizing the so-called zero-gap package-on-package concept. Additionally, it may be practical to implement the compartmental EMI shielding configuration using MIS, since its embedded copper trays can serve as a perfect system ground for the whole package. The resemblance of FlickChip MIS package to FANAR wafer level package, as mentioned in slide number 13, begs the question. Will FlickChip MIS package ever become a viable alternative to FANAR wafer level package such as EWLB? The answer is, in a very small package volume, it might. Shown here is a thermal level comparison between a one-layer FlickChip MIS package and an EWLB package with one-layer RDL. The result tells us that this one-layer FlickChip MIS package will have a better thermal conductivity than its EWLB counterpart of similar form factors. Think about it. FlickChip MIS package is essentially a chip-last fan-out package without RDL. Instead, it has embedded copper traces. MIS is not new. Its core technology IP has been around for over two decades. However, in the literature, there's no comprehensive treatment on MIS technology. Much of the information on modern MIS applications is in the form of data sheets. This ECTC paper compiles such information in a coherent and organized manner. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this virtual ECTC 2020 conference. Stay safe.